Hey, I'm Derek, it's me, Derek, and this is Stop Skeletons and Fighting. No, this is 2020. It's a new slate, it's a new year, it's a new decade. And I think we can all look at this decade and say, let's do it. Let's get our video game collections as dumb as possible. They said it couldn't be done. It definitely can be done because I have a handful on my wish list, on my bucket list of really dumb controllers that I need in my life. I got my DS piano, got my Dreamcast fishing rod. It's, that's still broken. I got the official steering wheel for Gran Turismo on PS3. I don't even have this Gran Turismo, but I have this steering wheel uh, because I got it for free 99 at a garage sale. They didn't want it. I wanted it. Made a whole goddamn video about weird controllers with Aaron Hansen, but you know what? Those were dumb controllers. There are dumber, cooler, more gimmicky, expensive controllers that I would love to have in my collection. And so this is just like a personal list of stuff. Hey, I don't own stuff I would like to own and stuff I want to share with you because what's better than sharing dumb video game stuff? Not a whole lot. No. First up, the Resident Evil 4 chainsaw. It's a chainsaw controller. Moving on. The Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Controller is a blood-covered chainsaw that comes in both for the GameCube and for the PlayStation 2. Loose, these things look around about 60, 70 bucks, but uh, if you want to get it complete in the box for the display and all that stuff, that's looking like about $150, $200, but it's maybe the wildest controller ever. It's a blood-covered chainsaw controller that actually looks like uh, to be used as an actual controller. Seems terrible. It has two handles, and that's what the... the uh, uh, the shoulder buttons are, it has a pull cord for the start button, the starter, and it makes noise. The blades don't move, it's just a sound effect, but it's still like, this is a real thing. At least with the PS2, there is, there's only 50,000 that were made, and they all have a little certificate, a little printing on the side. It is just amazing. So I, I'm not sure which one I would like to have more. I mean, I have both Resident Evil 4 on PS2 and on GameCube. Even though the PS2 version uh, is a garbage looking, version of Resident Evil 4. It plays really, really well. Uh, I think if I could, I would like to have both controllers. It's, and this is probably one of the most well-known controllers that we're talking about today, because uh, how do you not love a controller shaped like a chainsaw? It's not the only chainsaw like peripheral. There is a Gears of War a replica of the chainsaw gun uh, from Gears of War, but it's not a functioning controller that you could play Gears of War with. It's just like a cosplay item. I want it. It's multiple chainsaw controllers. I want him. Presumably they made the chainsaw so that Shinji Mikami could cut his head off. He swore that if Resident oh. Evil if Resident Evil 4 ever came out on another system, he's like, I'd cut my head off. <laughs> and next, another Capcom joint, Onimusha 3 Demon Siege. This is a great game, solid Onimusha game. The Japanese version came with a special edition that was packed with a katana controller, complete with a cool stand. Uh, it had a a, a thing you could sheath the blade, a plastic blade and a sheath, and it had all of the controls mapped onto the, uh, the, the handle. And I've looked at this thing a lot, and I just can't understand. It looks like such a bad controller. It looks like so genuinely like a terrible way to actually play the game. Oh god, I want it. It looks so cool. But I feel like, alright, it's for Onimusha 3. Play it with Onimusha 3. But yo, what about some Bushido Blade? What if you got two of them? And then you were doing Bushido Blade. All right, here's here's the here's the the plan here. You get two PlayStations, you hook them up, right? So you can do the first person only the f first person uh, Bushido Blade uh, mode, which you can do link cable wise. You get two Oni Musha katanas, and then you have a real ass Bushido Blade party. That's what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, because this is a Japanese only release, uh, they're quite expensive, they're quite rare. I would imagine though, you could probably just get the katana by itself for a little cheaper, but you wanna get the big box, you wanna get the stand. I would love to get my hands on one of these things. I've seen the, uh, the, the Resident Evil chainsaw controller. I feel like I have held one at some point, but the Onimusha katana, I feel like people have forgotten about that. And I think people need to remember how awesome Onim Onimusha was and then how awesome, uh, how awesome this katana looks as a practical controller seems terrible, which is even better in my book. Up next, you've probably seen this one because it is available on the PS2, the PS4, and the Switch. And that is the Dragon Quest Slime Controller. Now, there is no shortage of cool Dragon Quest stuff. There's a really cool slime controller where uh, it looks like a normal PS4 controller, but one of the slime's eyes is the analog stick. That's fun. There's a PS4 where there's a little 
melly slime that's like melted on the PS4. That's fun. But how about like holding a slime that's about as big as a burger and then turning that over and using that as a controller? More of these released in Japan than in America, but they were released in America. Oh, I have proof. So, uh, Dragon Quest Eight. Here's a little advertisement for it. I'm cute and a controller too. The weirdest thing about this is it's also it comes with a stand and it is like a little, it's again, something you can like put on display and then also turn it over and use it as a controller. It does not seem uh, very er ergonomic. You need to have gigantic hands or to really use it comfortably. I think what's kind of interesting is that uh, there is, the blue model is the most common one and that's the one that we got in America. For the PS2, there's a silver metal slime version uh, that was only released in Japan. That's really fun because that's worth more experience. That's, that's, that's more impressive. It's strange that you have the slime controller, right? But you have to like turn it around and play it upside down. Cause you, so when you, it's all the buttons are on the bottom, right? And the shoulder buttons are on its back. And so when you're playing, you look down and it's like, there's this upside down face like staring at you. So you basically like, you're playing on a slime's butt. That's kind of weird. And if you're playing it like relaxed style, then you're just putting the slime's mouth right in your crotch. <laughs> Is there something more sinister about this slime controller? What's up, Japan? What's up, Japan? How you doing? The Switch version comes with a, a cardboard box that you can like make and put together and have your uh, Switch on top of. It's a little Switch stand so you can play uh, Dragon Quest with good orchestrated music on your Switch with your big fat uh, slime controller. Good stuff. Very common, uh, I think, really, because of so many dif different versions of it. I guess I I've seen them from like about 80 to 200 dollars depending on the system, depending on the color, depending on how complete it is in the package. One of the most common uh, controllers we may be talking about here. I'm glad the Dragon Quest is is keeping uh, the spirit of like dumb controllers alive. Because I feel like when I saw this on the PS2 back in the day, it was sort of like, of course. But seeing it on the Switch, I was like, oh, awesome. Good for them. Good. Weird controllers are still around and I want them. Up next, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to with. Protect your neck. Supreme clientele only, all right? Yo, if you're a real Iron Man, if you're really Tony Starks, if you're really pretty Tony, I don't know why I only have uh, Ghostface Kill references in my head right now. You gotta get the Wu-Tang Clan Shaolin style, AKA Taste the Pain? Taste the Pain. Shaolin style. Shaolin's more on brand for Wu-Tang, but Taste the Pain is dumb as hell. So a long time ago, there was this game called Thrill Kill for the PS1. It was a four player fighting game. It was, uh, I've always heard, never actually played it, it was not released, it was finished and then kind of cancelled. Very kind of complicated history around it, you probably are familiar with Thrill Kill. I've always heard it's not really that great, but they did reuse that engine for a couple of games, like the X-Men Arcade, Mutant, Mutant Academy games, but also the Wu-Tang Clan video game, uh, Shaolin style slash Taste the Pain. Uh, and apparently there is a special edition version of this game that came with a Wu-Tang W uh, controller that apparently uh, does not have rumble, obviously it does not have any analog, uh, and does not play very well. It hurts your hands, and it's, I've heard it, it is a genuinely terrible controller, which is awesome. And I've heard the game is also not that great also. Everything about this just sounds so perfect for me. It's it's a celebrity game, which we did, I don't think we realized how good we had it when we had lots of celebrity endorsed games. We didn't know how great it was to have like full video games with celebrities and stuff on it. It's, it, it's, it's So you have that golden memory and then you have a bad controller uh, that is shaped like the Wu-Tang W. So I bet there are some rap fans out there that have this, don't even care about video games. They just care about Wu-Tang. And that's great, you know? Video games, it, it's the hip hop video games, the culture comes together. It meets in the middle with Wu Tang Shaolin style and the bad Wu Tang controller. Like, I've seen it go for like 150, 200 bucks. Like, this is like a shockingly expensive controller. And that's not even like the full set. If you wanted to get the actual collector's edition set in the box and stuff, uh, that's several hundred dollars more than that. Just the controller is like 150, 200 bucks for a bad controller. Something really bad is really expensive. That's funny sometimes. And next, maybe, maybe the dumbest controller that's ever been made for a gimmick, a gimmicky game. And that is for Death Crimson, which is maybe the dumbest game of all time. Look at this monstrosity. Look at this. Now you must be saying to yourself, wow, there are a lot of those. Nope, only one. And you must say, wow, Derek, only one of those? And I say, yes. You go, wow, that belongs in a museum. And it does. And it should, and it is in a museum. I don't know if that museum still exists. That would be an amazing 
like patronage, let's go to Japan and go to the Death Crimson Museum and play this gigantic plastic gun with a Saturn built inside of it. Yeah, Death Sama, if you're nasty. And I, I love the, uh, if you look closely on the image, uh, this image is kind of old. That's like a, a, a pretty tiny tube TV and a just ludicrously gigantic gun. Like, of course, I would never be able to own this and put it in my own uh, collection. It would be great to one day play it. But Death Crimson is a bottomless well, a bottomless hole of stupid, dumb shit. And uh, of course, of course, somebody made a gigantic gun to play this terrible game and they put it in a museum because culture matters. And lastly, I don't know if this is really a showstopper, it's probably the most attainable and maybe the cheapest one, but in researching for this video, I came across a really great factoid about it, and that is the Mortal Kombat Arcade Fight Stick. Uh, this was an exclusive uh, thing that came with the with, with Mortal Kombat 9. It was part of the gigantic uh, special edition. Here's some footage of it from my old friend uh, Lance. Lance, are using your footage, Retro War TV. It's meant to resemble the original Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 3 uh, stick as much as possible. It has the, uh, you know, the four attack buttons with block in the middle and run. Here's the fun thing. Because of uh, Skullgirls, uh, they put out a patch so that you can play Skullgirls on PS4 with a PS3 controller. But that actually allowed you to be able to play. You could use this Mortal Kombat 9 arcade controller on Mortal Kombat 11. And also, apparently, it doesn't quite have enough buttons to fully utilize Mortal Kombat 11. And also, the stick is not quite... It's not quite set up to be used for diagonals because Mortal Kombat doesn't really use diagonals. And so it's my understanding that using this uh, arcade stick for Mortal Kombat 11 is not a good idea. So that's why I would love to have this thing. Also, it's such a big, bulky uh, device. Look at Lance playing with it. Look at that cute dog. I forgot he had a cute dog. Love you, Lance. Love you, brother. The plan here is 2020. Let's get dumb. Let's, let's embrace being dumb. Let's have fun. Let's forget about what anyone thinks or cares about. We out here trying to play games, try to collect stuff that we think is fun. And that's not hurting nobody. So let's have, let's do it. That's, that's 2020. This, I guess the first video of 2020. First video of the decade. Holy snap. Hey, I want to thank everybody who supported us last year. 2020, we are hitting it. We got a lot of great plans. Um, we came back from a vacation. We're refreshed. I'm ready to kill it. Uh, but we wanted to come back with a fun little, a fun little video here to kick it off. More videos are coming. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters. Uh, they really came through and are helping support the show in a big, big way. Uh, we're also on we're streaming a lot more on Twitch. I uh, want to find out all the information, what's going on with the channel. Check us out on Twitter. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. All of that stuff. Hey, stay dumb, stay powerful, stay toned, and we'll see you again real soon. Uncle Derek signing out. Take care.